Hello guys. I just thought to myself this morning that I should do like a a refresher video for all the new members on Panic Station and for the new people on YouTube that watch this. Uh, basically, just quickly, Panic Station is a social networking site that we've set up uh, for people with anxiety related disorders, you know, agoraphobia, panic attacks, depression. Um, so if you need, if you want to join a network, basically, people that are in a similar situation to yourselves, um, get over there. There's a link up there, top of the screen, uh, panicstation.ning.com, just if you want to join that network and, and try and join the community, you know, people on there helping each other out sort of thing with blogs and, and videos and stuff like that. So that's out of the way. Uh, this refresher, I just wanted to get a few things out, you know, like how my anxiety started and that. This is now the fifth time I've recorded this video. I was using my webcam, but it keeps fucking freezing on me, sorry. Um, so, yeah, and I keep running out of time because I talk too much crap. So, basically, five years ago nearly, I had my first panic attack, sitting at home on my own. Um, my son was upstairs, he was in bed, asleep, I was downstairs, not doing anything in particular, you know, I think I was playing on the Xbox at the time, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just, bam, panic attack. I didn't know it was a panic attack, because I'd never had a panic attack. Um, I didn't know what was going on, basically, it was just, I thought I was dying, and that, that is all I can really say about it, I was convinced that this was it. My number was up and I was a gunner. Um, I ran outside, I remember, looking around, it was night time and that, and I could, the street lights, every time I turned my head like this, the street lights were sort of trailing and it was how you would experience a class A drug. I don't know, some, I don't know, I don't know, I've never fucking taken any, but that is, when you see it in the movies and that, and you see how people are, that is exactly how it was. Um, not nice. I remember running upstairs after this. My, I felt like my throat was closing over. Um, I was dizzy. I was having palpitations. My heart was pounding. Um, couldn't breathe properly. Just everything that you associate with a full-blown panic attack. Um, I remember running upstairs and giving my lad a kiss on the forehead. And then I went and lay on the bathroom floor. And it was just waiting, basically, to die. That that was how bad it was. Uh, looking back, man, scary, scary shit. But touch wood, that was five, nearly five years ago, and I've never had another one as bad as that. I suppose it's because I've learned a bit more about it, you know, and how to deal with it, sort of thing, and and knowing the body's responses to anxiety and stress and stuff like that, and. I don't know. I did have more panic attacks after that, but I don't know how many more. Several, you know, and I still have mild ones now. They're more like anxiety attacks now rather than panic attacks. Um, so, you know, that was how it, that was when it started. How it started, I don't know. It just started. There's no rhyme or reason as to why. I've always been kind of anxious person, you know, and kind of shy and and stuff like that, but never anything like that before uh, so it was completely out of the blue no no uh, f other family members had this none of my friends and nothing so I didn't know fuck all about it excuse my language so it was a totally new thing for me and I just could not shake that fear of having another one and that was what escalated for me into agoraphobia and depression and and just general anxiety, virtually all the time, man. Um, because I couldn't shake that fear of having another one of them, another night like that. I didn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't. So, that was basically how my anxiety started, from that one initial night, and then I had quite a few panic attacks surrounding that. Um, but then they just sort of generally phased out, sort of thing, and it's been a while since I had one. But I shouldn't say that, because I probably will now, but I think I can deal with it a bit better now. Um, 
for those of you who know, I started the YouTube stuff last October and doing exposure therapy and stuff like that. I've had CBT therapy before. I'm now seeing a private therapist who does pretty much everything, hypnotherapy, life coaching, uh, psychotherapy, counselling, bits of everything really. So, you know, we kind of tailor make my therapy at the moment and it's just, we're still feeling out, you know, where we're going to go with it sort of thing. I've only had six sessions, so I'm actually going tomorrow, but it does cost a bit and it's putting a bit of a strain and a bit of added pressure on, you know, is this worth me paying out for this therapy? It puts a kind of pressure on it, you know, because I've not seen immediate benefits, but I'm going to stick with it, definitely, because I felt, after six weeks now, looking at it, I do feel like I'm getting somewhere in myself, and whether it's because of that or, or because of this or, or the project that I'm looking at sort of thing, you know, I don't know, but having a focus and having somebody to talk to regularly about things is definitely helping, so... That's about where we are, man. Um, I worked for about three years, nearly three years with anxiety, uh, until it just got to the point where I just could not function anymore. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I couldn't bring myself to go into work, because when I was, I was a mess, man. It was like being in a, on the brink of panic all day, like eight hours a day at work, being on the brink of a panic attack. And then I'd get home and I'd just constantly, it'd be like, you'd get home and have ten minutes where you think, oh, thank God I'm home, you know. But then it'd be, shit, I've got to go back tomorrow. You know, so it was a kind of a never-ending cycle, man. And even the weekends were just as bad because I'd be back at work on Monday. Work is something that I would love to get back into, man. I am not the type of person who wants to sit around and do fuck all with their time, man, because I get bored. I've sat and done jack shit for too long, man. So I do want to get back out there, and but I'm just not in the right fucking physical condition and mental condition. But I am trying to do my best to make things right, man. I'm paying for this therapy out of my own pocket to try and get somewhere. So, you know, help, basically. And that's about it, really. For those of you who didn't know me before, you know, and they've just found this new YouTube account, or who have just joined Panic Station, I wanted to just let you know, you know, kind of what, where I am and, and what I'm about. Um, I was agoraphobic for probably 12 months where I just couldn't bring myself to leaving the house, and through fear. So it went from that fear of the panic attack to fear of everything, man fear of even fucking walking into another room in my house sort of thing because I just didn't think my legs could carry me, you know. So the fear just escalated and escalated and once I sort of got to grips with one fear I'd be scared about something else. So it was just a never ending cycle. And now I've still got them fears of certain things but I can sort of rationalise them in my own head, if you know what I mean. You know, I can kind of make sense of things and I know that physical stuff that I get, like the wobbly legs and the pounding heart and you get aches and pains and a little sharp pain here and there, I don't always now associate it to shit, I'm dying. You know, I can kind of rationalise it and think, oh, I've got that because I've done, you know, something like that or maybe I'm actually coming down with something rather than this is it, it's the end. It's all doom and gloom. You know what I mean? I mean, you have to try and look on the positive side of things, and that's what I'm trying to do, man. And having panic station and stuff like that helps, definitely, because people will bring you back down to earth and tell you you are not at death's door. This is kind of normal for the people that suffer with this kind of shit, so it helps to talk, definitely.